Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. It is spring and it is morel season and morels are a really popular wild edible mushroom. They grow all over the world and right now in the Northern Hemisphere and all across Northern America, we have morels popping up. So it's an exciting mushroom to forage if you're a mushroom forager. It's a great reason to be out in the woods. So on this channel, I talk all about wild mushrooms and on this particular episode, we're gonna be talking about wild morels and where and how to find them. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have quite a few different varieties. Today I'm going to look at the four main types of morels that we have growing around here on the Upper West Coast. And we have ones that associate with hardwood trees that are known as natural morels. We also have early morels or verpa that grow in those same kind of habitats. We have half free morels that also grow in that same kind of habitat. We also have landscape morels and we have burn morels and we also have a conifer loving morel. So on this episode, I'm gonna show you all these different kind of morels, their habitats. So this is the morel episode, get you geared up for this spring to get out there and find yourself some delicious wild edible mushrooms with the help of Mushroom Wonderland. So make sure to hit subscribe and come with me on this episode. Mushroom Wonderland. So it should be understood that in mushroom lingo, we have common names and we have scientific names. Scientific names are typically Latin. They're big tongue twisters. So most people, uh, layman's people, like to just stick with the common names. So let's go over a list of the more common names for some of the morels. So we're gonna have false morels. And this typically is talking about the genus Gyromitra. Um, Gyromitra esculenta is one that is known to be poisonous. There's ways to detoxify it, but over the ages, people have been sickened and even died from eating um, these Gyromitra esculenta. So Gyromitra falls under the heading of false morel. And uh, there's also edible false morels, and there's a lot of contention in the mycological community. But just for all intents and purposes, and for the layman person, gyromitra means false morel. You don't want to eat these ones. They don't have the pits and the ridges of a real morel. They're kind of just more wrinkly, and we call them the brain mushroom sometimes because they look like brains. The second common name is going to be your early morel. So that one in the genus Verpa. So it's still in the same family, Morchellaceae, is going to be just like one of the other morels you could treat it just like one of the other morels just make sure that you cook it well uh, before you serve it but this one looks a little bit more like gyromitra a little bit less like uh, morel but it has a cap on a big white stem it's got some wrinkly kind of stuff going on on the cap but again no pits and no holes in it so verpa bohemica they are most common early morel that happens here in the west Still a good edible, but definitely inferior to real morels. Then we have half free morels, and these are gonna be ones where the bottom of the cap is not attached to the stem. So they have a unique look, sort of a umbrella, more of like a real regular mushroom look, you know, the cap and it hangs over the stem. Whereas a real morel is going to be all fused in you know, one piece, the stem and the cap are not separated. Whereas a half free morel, it's halfway separated the stem comes halfway up into the cap and it kind of hangs over the edge. And then we have our true morels, which would include your burn morels and your natural conifer morels and your cottonwood morels. All of those other ones, the blonde morels, they all kind of fall into the morel category. So we're gonna have false morels, we have early morels, we have true morels. And some of those are black and some of those are blonde and some of those are burn morels. And as you get more into this, you'll start to decipher the true morels amongst each other. But true morels are always kind of hollow cavity in the center. They're gonna have um, these pits and crevices. Some of them look like little ladders. And uh, they all sort of have this same look with all the little holes, kind of like a corn cob that's got all the corn taken off of it. So the first type of morel that we're gonna look at is gonna be the burn morel. And burn morels are infamous for um, being kind of where the commercial morel pickers go. Uh, wherever a forest fire burned, usually the next spring, a lot of morels will pop up. Uh, people and scientists are still a little bit unsure as to why they flush the way they do after a burn. We just know that it does happen. Could be the soil got conditioned just right. It could have something to do with the symbiosis with the trees that they were growing with. We're gonna hop into a segment where I actually went out to a burn in the past couple of weeks. And there's a short bit about how to find burn morels in Washington State. Let's go check that out. We're gonna go for a walk 
in this burned area. See if we can come across some burn morels here in the spring. One of the most delicious wild edible mushrooms that you can find in the spring. Oh my gosh. And as I'm saying this, I see someone right here. <laughs> Just as I'm saying that. Wow. What are the chances of that? I swear I did not plan that. There, there, there. Oh my gosh. I see quite a few. So this is where I get out my handy knife and I'm gonna cut it at the base and I put them into this mesh bag. These are nice and young. Really nice, beautiful morels. And uh, oh, that's always exciting. I just happened to kind of notice the profile as I was looking kind of at eye level here. Oh yeah, baby. This is a pretty good spot. So you see this, this is Morcella sextillata, I'm pretty sure. One of the black burn morels. There are four different burn morels here in Washington. Sextillata, eczema, tomentosa, and um, oh, what is the other one? The other one is, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but I'm pretty sure these are sextillata. They've learned how to cultivate these in China. So that's good. Oh man, there's little baby pins coming up too. So I came right at the right time to get some nice mature morels. One of the absolute best spring mushrooms. This one's a little bit old and blown out, but um, you know, good for the dehydrator. Probably has some bugs in it, but you know, that's okay. That's part of the game. Another one. So this is what we call a patch, <laughs> which is very nice to find a patch of morels. First thing as I'm doing the introduction, that is awesome. So if you get down low, kind of scan the ground and look for these morel shapes popping up. I just got really lucky that time. I'm gonna leave ones like this to grow for later. Try not to be too greedy. So your first year burn is gonna by far be the best. You know, the burn that the spring after the fire is usually the best for morels. And then the second year burn, you can still find morels, but it's a little more hit or miss. And then after that, it's just kind of a crapshoot. If you find some, it might just be coincidental. So if you've heard about a, a fire that happened last year, make sure to get out there this spring and uh, you know, your chances will be the best. So one little tip to you when you're out um, hunting for morels, especially in a burn area, everything can kind of start to look the same. So my, 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 uh, my hint to you is to get low to the ground where you can kind of see under the underbrush and look for the profile of mushrooms. Let me flip my camera and I just spotted one and let me show you what this looks like when we get closer to the ground. So here we are looking into this kind of burned area, but as I get, as I, as I get a little bit lower down, I spot something right over there. See that, hiding behind that log. Now it's because I got down on its level. And uh, look at that. Beautiful morel, but I can see the bugs just buzzing around it. You see that? That's gonna be so full of larva and stuff. Um, still good for the dehydrator, I guess, if you don't mind eating larva. Um, Yeah, definitely one of the best spring mushrooms you're gonna get is gonna be your morels. Look at that one, it's beautiful. Very light colored. As they get older, they get darker, but yeah, gorgeous morels out here. All right, so I definitely got a good haul of uh, morels today. Got really lucky finding all of those beautiful blondish morels. So very satisfied with this spring mushroom. So hiking in a burn environment is really inhospitable so make sure that you have some good gear some good uh, shoes or boots and long pants man because if you're wearing shorts out here you're going to get scratched up on all these little sticks and stuff and uh, you might not feel it when it happens but later at night you're going to be hurting from that soot 
in your wounds. So become to, you know, it's not that easy to find these mushrooms and to go out and seek them, but it's way worth it and it's a lot of fun. Just be careful out here, it's hazardous for sure. Look what's growing right there on the side of that fence. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know if any of you guys pick mushrooms when you're driving, but I'm gonna turn around and uh, I'm pretty sure I just saw a bunch of like super chunky morels growing <laughs> right there on the side of the road. Let's go check this out. <laughs> Some mushrooms, oh my gosh. Do you see that what I see? Hold on. Where's my knife? I don't have my knife here. Let me grab this plastic bag. Oh, you're kidding me, dude. Look at this. Look at this. Holy smokes. Dude, they're everywhere. Score. Look at this. Mortella importuna, or the landscape morel. These guys growing here next to this fence. Holy crap. They're tough. Tough stems. These are a great spring mushroom. Going right here on the side of the side of the road I spotted these from a ways off and uh, holy crap they're all over here look at that what a score wow a couple more right down here look at this look at how young and fresh these are holy crap this is in March Washington State there's kind of like new construction along here. Unbelievable. Look at down here. Holy crap, you guys. You see all this? Marcella Importuna. Just bunch. Very nice. All right, there they are. Better look at the Marcella Importuna or the landscape morel. Very conical very pointy right they start to get really kind of wrinkled at the base when they start getting older um, and you can see in a really old one very blown out what you can do with these old ones is chop them up and mix them with some water and just pour them over some new wood chips somewhere a new garden area and you might get lucky and have some of them pop up but they're always very tall and skinny very saprobic you don't need any trees to associate with these mushrooms are free living and for that reason, they could be cultivated and they've kind of perfected that art in China. We struggle in America and elsewhere, but the methods are pretty available online now on how to cultivate these. So I could take a spore print and just start from scratch, but it's kind of a lot of work. I'll leave that to other people. But this one, Marcella Importuna, really delicious spring mushroom that's edible and fairly common. And sometimes it can grow in huge numbers, so you can get a really nice basket full like I did today. Very exciting. Good. So, you guys saw that, right? There's like a couple pounds of morels I just found. Just growing right on the side of the road. Next to this new fence that went up. New construction is a good place to look for. Marcella Importuna. New landscapes. So, big fat bag of morels. Great spring mushroom. Now I want to go see if we can find some natural morels that associate with the fir trees. So we're going to head out to a different forest. Let's go check that out. These ones known as a uh, Morcella norvegiensis or perhaps an undescribed species that associates with conifer trees. So deep in our moss covered forests here of the PNW, you can sometimes find these beautiful blonde colored morels popping up. And I find them every spring in the same place. Some of the best eating, but definitely some of the hardest to find and uh, some of the most rewarding though. So let's go deep into the conifer forest of Mushroom Wonderland to discover the conifer, deep woods loving natural morels. Look at this. Now we're talking some morels. Look at that. Look right over here. Oh, gorgeous. I don't know, really, really deep here in this conifer forest. I think that these are the Norvengensis and uh, they can start out really blonde like this. They get darker with age.
Morel season is officially on in Western Washington. Look at this guy. How nice is that? Very nice. About nine different species of wild morel that grow here. Um, about seven of which occur on the west side of the mountain range, uh, the Cascade Range. But these ones deep in the conifer forest of western Washington that recur every year are probably a more rare species. Uh, I found Morchella tridentina, a whole bunch of that last year. We're going to go check that spot next. But uh, those ones are more saprotrophic. They were just growing underneath these big maple trees and uh, sword fern. But we have sword fern here too. But if you look, it's just this moss. I'm not a moss expert. I don't know what kind of moss this is. But a very dense conifer forest here. Beautiful example of young morels in the wild. How exciting. You got to get out there and find some of these guys. All right, so I'm down here walking along the side of this river. This is a ro low river basin. These are really common in Western Washington and usually lined with trees in the genus Populus. So um, cottonwood and poplar trees, but this one specifically cottonwood trees are good trees for morel associates. So, you know, there's a, a big river running right here, one of the mini rivers in Western Washington. And it's gonna have these cottonwood trees growing here. And this is where a lot of morels grow. So we're gonna check out this area, see if we can find some natural morels. A real morel. That's always kind of exciting to find. Look at how long the stipe is on that guy. Beautiful. See, it's connected all the way from the bottom. So underneath um, cottonwoods, right here in Western Washington, beautiful little morel. Hang. The cap is not separate from the stipe. Let's take a look at the, the leaves of the cottonwood. And here's what your cottonwood leaves look like. So it's one way you can identify the cottonwood tree is really this yellow green color and the leaves are spade shaped. And then the bark on them is really rough. And uh, they stand much straighter and taller than your big leaf maple that's really common around here. It's interesting that morels like to come out in the spring. I never see them coming out in the fall. And I really think it has something to do with the cold ground getting warm. You know, there's a lot of moisture, but it's been really cold. And then something about it warming up really starts to signal the mycelium underground to fruit. Whereas like chanterelles and lobster mushrooms, it's the dry, hot ground that's cooling down and getting wet that kind of triggers their fruiting. So there's definitely some spring mushrooms and there's some fall mushrooms. And once in a while, there's like an anomaly where they overlap. I saw somebody post a picture of a chanterelle in April yesterday. Um, I kind of want to call BS on it, but hey, it could happen. You know, there's weird little microhabitats and stuff like that does happen. So, but kind of typically as a rule, your morels are gonna come out in the spring and your chanterelles and porcini are gonna come out in the fall. Beautiful. So the half freeze and the regular morels growing right near each other, same habitat here. And, uh, but these are gonna need a good rinsing because they're very sandy. That's what happens picking under cottonwoods. There's a lot of sand. They really like sandy soil. Look at that big boy. So this is Morchella populophila. So this one, uh, popula named after the genus of the black cottonwood. So these associate with cottonwoods. I'm gonna cut this one off at the base. And, and this is known as a half free morel. So if I open this up, you can see that the stipe is connected at the top, but half of it is free from the stipe. That's why they call it a half free morel. A regular morel, cut that in half. One continuous cavity inside. So this is a regular morel. This is your half-free morel. 
All right, everyone, so thank you so much for joining that episode. It is morel season, and if it hasn't started yet in your neck of the woods, it is about to start soon. So make sure to get your boots on, get your bucket, and make sure to hit subscribe to Mushroom Wonderland. Hop over to mushroom-wonderland.com to get some merch, and we'll see y'all on the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace out.